is Alex with KGI Capital. And today I'm going to share with you a sample offering memorandum, which also is typically called an OM. And I'm just gonna go through and share a previous OM from an old property and give you an idea of what a typical OM looks like, what you can kind of expect, and it will help you to understand what you're, you're looking at when you are looking at potential deals to uh, invest in in the future. So as you can see here, we have an OM. Typically, there are a few different uh, things that are in a professional offering memorandum for a property. So typically you have your executive summary, which provides an overview of the investment. And that includes the investment thesis, the key financial metrics, and the sponsor's track record. Then investment overview, um, which provides more detailed information about the investment, including usually the property type, location, market analysis, et cetera. Third, property details. So that would provide additional information about the property, maybe occupancy, physical characteristics, work needed, that kind of thing. Fourth, a financial analysis, which would provide numbers and projected income, expenses, cash flow, return metrics, things like that. Another thing you will see sometimes in offering mem memorandums and sometimes later on in more of the legal documents, uh, risks and risk mitigations. So this section outlines the key risks associated with the investment and strategies that the sponsor will use to mitigate these risks. Another thing that you, you can see would be offering terms. So this will provide more details about the offering for the LP specifically, um, for you as the passive investor. Um, it will also probably talk about the investment structure of the deal, the minimum investment amount, any fees involved, and anything else that has to do with your share of the investment. And then a background on the sponsor, so maybe information about the spon sponsor's experience, track record, etc., which I touched on earlier. Sometimes it's in the executive summary, sometimes it's elsewhere. There's no one way that... OMs are made, everybody makes them a little bit differently and different sections might be in different areas and different things might be combined or not. But those are usually things that you're going to see when you're looking at a property that's being offered as an investment um, that you can passively invest in. So let's get into it. This is a sample OM and this is for a property in Oklahoma and we're going to move down. Typically they have some disclaimers. Then we've got on this OM, we've got the team with a little bit of background on each team member. And here's yours truly. Dun, 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 dun. Moving down, we have property management because that's a huge part of a deal. They are definitely an integral part of the investment. We have the property summary, which is kind of like the investment overview and the executive summary kind of all in one. So we've got the different aspects of the deal, all the basics, as you can see, et cetera, et cetera. So it gives you a really good idea of what specifically you would be investing in. Next up, we start to get into more details about the property and go into unit mix and different sizes and prices for different units, as well as the average market rent uh, that we can see from these types of units. And this just gives more detailed information for investors so that investors can make a, an informed decision on what it is that they are investing in and if it makes sense for their financial goals. Next, we kind of go into just more details about the property from a community standpoint. Here's the laundry room, here's some pictures. Now we're getting into the financial analysis of the property. So this is the pro forma. You've got your T12 over here, then you've got years one through five of projections. And this gives you an idea of the income and expenses of the property 
and what is being projected based on what we can come in and do to fix up and improve the property and how the property will benefit from our value add strategy and business plan that we put in place. We get into a little bit of the sources of capital and the uses of that capital. So here it's talking about how we are funding the property purchase, um, which would be you know equity and debt, and then how that's being used would be on the right side. Here is a business plan summary. You want to make sure that the syndicators and the active investors in this deal have a have a have a plan. <laughs> and so this one obviously is a, a repositioning and value add strategy. Um, and then it talks about the different aspects of the plan that's going to drive the results that we're projecting. Next up, we've got investor returns and structure. So now we're looking at kind of the offering terms of the deal, how it's structured. You know, this is all based on a hundred thousand dollar investment. It shows the projections for an investor if they put in a hundred thousand dollars and what that would look like over a five-year period because this was planned to be a five-year hold with a sale at year five and it shows returns down here and so these are going to be where you can see how well this aligns with what it is that you are looking to uh, get out of your investments it also shows a little bit about the structure of the deal with a preferred 8% um, annualized preferred return and a 70-30 split between the, sponsor, the LP and the GP. And it also uh, shows that you would be able to receive cost segregation and um, get some good tax benefits from that. Make sure that you understand everything um, on this page because this is the one that probably affects you the most when you're looking at a deal. Next up in this OM, we've got some market rent comparables. So these are all the comps of uh, nearby properties that um, are similar to the property that was being offered in this offering memorandum and what we can expect for our own property uh, based on the comps. And then we just have a little bit more about the area and the area that this particular property is located in, what makes it a good investment. Usually they'll have something that talks about the market and the market research that's been done. This goes into it a little bit more as well about the market, five mile radius of different demographics for the property. So, you know, what's the median age, in, um, the, the income, average home value, population of the you know, surrounding area within the five miles, then employment, employment by industry. It's good to see lots of different um, industries and not have anything that's like the only industry. Here's a little bit more about the market and the area around the property. Here's the property. Here are a whole bunch of different uh you know, employers and different retail and just a whole bunch of things that show uh, the businesses and, and employers around the area. A little more about the city and a nice picture. I kind of touched on this earlier, but just more information about the market at large, because really you're invest wherever you're investing, the main thing that you can't change is the location of the property. So location is really important. Like they say, location, 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 it is important. So there is a lot of uh, emphasis put on the location. So here's some more information about location. And again, here's some more employers in the area. So it shows that there's a really good mix of employers and a uh, job, a uh, strong job market there. And lastly, we have post acquisition expectations. This gives you an idea of what to expect after we close on a deal like this. So communication, quarterly distributions, and re uh, regular reporting. And on this one, and then it shows next steps. So investment packet, sponsor review, wire funds, close purchase. It shows the minimum investment here and different um, types of funds that are accepted. Some things that would be good to ask about would be how well are your syndicators communicating with you now? 
And then how well are they going to be communicating with you after the deal? Because sometimes expectations are not set as to what that will be. Make sure that it aligns with what it is that you're expecting. So that is an example of a pretty typical looking OM and what you can kind of expect in one of those documents that shares an investment property. Now that you know a little bit more about what to look for in an OM and what makes a good, strong, professional OM, hopefully it will help you in your investing journey and help you to achieve your passive investing goals. But if you have more questions, feel free to um, share those questions with me and I'd be happy to answer them. Here at KGI Capital, we invest in multifamily value-add or distressed properties in the Midwest and Southeast. Typically, we focus on 20 to 100 units. And if that's something that is of interest to you to get involved in passively, there's a lot of really good benefits to investing in deals like that. I'd be happy to chat more about that with you. Um, feel free to schedule a call and I would love to chat.